giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Our first topic tonight, deep space recap. So we've officially made it through deep space, stands, ugh, sandstorms, uh, hatch panel loading station punching, and hab climbs and falls. So this season's um, penalty-free high score was 141 set by the Turing Division champs out of a possible 154 for a perfect match. So that's pretty good. Um, 1323 finally got the big dub. An FRC alum is finally a Woody Flowers Award winner. 1902 and 1816 are in the Hall of Fame. And Dean wore a cape while shooting a t-shirt cannon. So that was, you know, one of the highlights of my champs. So, and adios to the bag. See you later slash never. Uh, 2020 has a lot to live up to. So looking back on this year, so each of you, how many years have you guys been involved with FRC specifically? And with that in mind, like what, what did you think of this season? So Alan, why don't we start off with you real quick? So this was year 17 for me. So I've been doing this since uh, Stack Attack back in 2003. Um, this is a this is a pretty. I actually thought this was a pretty good game. I think they, I think the GDC did a good job of getting a little bit of a unique challenge. Going to multiple game pieces, right? They didn't just give us a ball again. So we had to do something new um, and make it more complicated. That you had to do it and figure out whether your strategy was. It has a lot more. Um, a lot more things to decide as a team that first weekend other than you know how do you score this exact thing right and even in some of the best games you clearly were just shooting a high goal right you knew that's what you had to do to win a world title here you had to do a lot of other things you had a lot more tasks that you had to figure out and there are a lot of unique ways to do it yeah i would agree with you um so stacy what did you think of the season how many seasons of frc games have you seen so i've been in since 2012 and I honestly think this was this was one of my favorites. I really like everything that they've done with doing themes. I think it's really, it kind of makes it a little bit more exciting, um, obviously, for apparel and what you're going to wear. It makes it fun. Um, I'm in marketing, so I tend to look at these things a little bit differently. And I, I do like that. At first, I, I, I didn't when they introduced... Uh, stronghold I, I wasn't for it but it's it's growing on me and you actually just reminded me that one of my favorite moments hands down of the whole year was dean with the cape and the t-shirt and the fact that they were playing like sweet dreams are made of it i just feel like that. <laughs> he was definitely living his best life like at that and it was going on for so long so long yeah so that i mean how happy he is yeah he, he like, looks like I a super do villain. That, yeah if he i does. can do that one day we're good yeah <laughs> i think that's the happiest i feel like i've ever seen dean in my like many yeah. many years and then it like cut off so i feel like they like somebody behind the scenes was like okay like uh, this is going on long enough we've got to, <laughs> got to get out with things yeah you probably uh, has some will i am quotes going on on his head at that time <laughs> it's like this really is dope like nope. <laughs> doing <Yep>. it <laughs> So Corey, besides uh, you know Dean looking like something out of uh, like The Incredibles, what was your uh, thoughts on this season? Um, well, I've been around at FRC since 2002. Um, I think the first game I saw live was 2001. But as far as my take on the game, it was for me it was more of a driver's game. Like I would just tell the driver get the ball, score it in this location, and then that was pretty much the extent of it whereas like last year you kind of had like three decisions where to put cubes and which one had more value than the other um i don't know like i enjoyed the game but man it was just a driver's game so i was like say pick up the ball go do this go do a hatch there and then i'm mm -hmm. kind of waiting for the next step yeah and that's a that's a good point like i feel like we've seen some of those like driver specific games like what comes to mind for me would be like 2007 and um like 2011 where there's just like very specific tasks that are very driver oriented but i personally i feel like this was a a more interesting audience game to to watch like i don't know personally last year i was just super bored even by our district champs i was like all right because there was no like you you knew who was going to win the match it wasn't like you know 2017 where it was like make or break like if you don't climb you're not winning this match um where i feel like this year it was a little more balanced what do you guys feel like in terms of, I guess, scoring, um, what the game was like compared to the past few years. Cause it, it seems like based on the feedback that, you know, the community has given in the last few years, they, it seems like there were some considerations made for this season scoring. 
Right. Uh, I definitely think they did a pretty decent job of that. I mean, we saw it in Detroit where you had no number one seeds make it to Einstein, right? Like it wasn't a dominant robot could not carry an alliance this year, right? It just, it just didn't work. You had to have your entire line playing well. Your defense spots, like the third picks mattered more than they have in years mm-hmm. to how, how successful your alliance was going to be, especially as we started getting further and further into the season. And we haven't even seen this play out all the way. Like what happens at IRI when you get three potentially <laughs> yeah. awesome robots all playing together, right? Um, that was really important, how much your draft picks mattered on your double climbs and triple climbs, possibly. Um, there was so much into it with how your robots had to play together that I really liked, right? Going back to, like, 2014 was another reason I liked that game, right? Similarly, you had to play with your entire alliance, and I thought you had to do the same thing this year, which is one of the reasons I like this game. Yeah, I would definitely agree with you. Um, so, Stacey, what do you think? I really liked how the the third robot did matter so much, and I, I liked seeing the defense as much as sometimes I it, it would annoy me a little bit. Um, I I definitely I, I just think it was interesting how teams had to kind of work together, and you know I really liked the fact that it wasn't just the obvious teams that were winning all of the time, and not the you know not the first seed alliance. So it made it yeah. interesting. Yeah, I mean, and case in point to that would be 11 14, 20 56 getting knocked out in the semis by that was none crazy. other than that was 195. Crazy. Like, talk about, you know, things not panning out at all the way that people expected it to. I mean, Alan said that there was no number one alliance that made it um, right. onto Einstein in Detroit. Right. So that's, that's pretty insane in itself. Um, Corey, from a standpoint of somebody who's really been behind the glass and like high level play, um, how did you see this game really like evolve? Um, I guess like for as you were saying, like it's a driver's game. Like how how different do you think it was from you know like your team's first event strategically to you know playing at champs? Yeah, it and it ultimately came down to and this is what I ended up telling our alliance is that it comes down to two teams on your alliance. It comes down to the team that's playing defense, which is your third robot. How well are you playing defense? and your alliance member who has the defender on them, how well do you play through defense? Um, those were like, the, that's what made and break in Worlds, I think, is is your defender really good? Because the guys that are open that has no defender, they're, they should be going par to par with the other guy who's not being defended. Mm-hmm. So it's how well can you play through defense? How well do you play against defense? And then don't miss your don't miss your climbs at the end. Um, mm-hmm. And that ended up becoming the deciding factor. I I do like that they had two very different game pieces. You had a flat hatch and a round ball that did not play well together for me- robots to use as mechanisms. They were not, they didn't work well together. You had to have two separate mechanisms for it, which I thought a big step change for first. Yeah, I found that pretty interesting, especially after last year where, you know, there was only one game piece. 2017, we saw two game pieces. Stronghold, we saw one. So I'm interested to see what happens game piece-wise next season. So we have some comments from chat. Um, So Lino said it was really fun. PJ says at first, um, I like that it was easy to ref, and then week four happened. (laughs) So (laughs) The, So, the G20 calls, yeah. Yeah, so Alan, I know that you are heavily involved with volunteering between like LRI and many other hats that you wear. Um, what do you think about PJ's comment? Uh, for refing, so yeah, so G20 yeah. was weird. We were um, we were not we were competing in week four, but not through um, week five and things where it started getting even weirder. Um, yeah, I hope they change it in some way to not have the on frame perimeter thing, right? There was a bunch of like side discussions of people wrapping their robots in aluminum foil or acrylic and things and trying to intentionally have things break. And we don't want any of that clearly, right? We don't <laughs> want to deal with that inspection. We don't want to deal with that inspect robots. That's not fun for anybody, right? That's one of the things I think first should be working on is making sure we can reduce penalties in games in general. Like that's one of the things we, when we rewrite our rules for our off season event, we try really hard to get as many clean matches as we can because there's certain rules that just are what we call ticky cack fouls that don't affect the game. They don't change anything, but they still end up costing people points for no real reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, and G20 ended up being that for a lot of teams where there wasn't anything really damaging, but yeah, something broke because it was a sign or something that didn't actually matter. There's going to be contact. Every robot game has contact. And that, that's one of the reasons why we like FRC is we kind of have that contact, right? Not every game is recycle rush. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for that. Yes. Um, <laughs> Seriously. So a few other comments from chat. So Kevin Sheridan to 54 said, I thought it was pretty boring, to be honest. Um, Anthony 
3175 said Destination Deep Space was the best game since 2016. And I... Ashano45 said I thought it was boring to watch. There wasn't anything super exciting for the robots to do. It was a pick in place. Um, So, you know, everybody has their opinions. I was bored to tears last year, and some people were super in love with that game. So to each their own. (laughs) Yep, Um, everybody's opinion. Yep. So I do think um, in terms of, you know, Alan was talking about headquarters really tries to eliminate ways that, you know, teams can get penalties and stuff. Um, I guess moving forward to to next season um, based on what you guys have seen in the last few seasons. And especially now that, you know, they have this panel of FRC community members that are going in and reviewing the game before it gets completely finalized. Um, What are you guys hoping for based on, you know, what was good and bad this season? I know personally, like (laughs) watching FTAs like run over and try to show a human player, like, no, just smash the glass here. And like the hatch panel will, will fall. It's like, <laughs> like, Oh God, it's like the springs again, but so designed, much worse. It's designed that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I guess, what are you guys hoping for, um, for 2020? What's the name? Hi, what is it? Uh, infinite, uh, infinite recharge. In, yeah, yeah. Infinite recharge. Yeah. It was like, I remember building something. So yeah. What are you guys hoping for? I, I mean, I think most people at FRC at this point are hoping to shoot something again at this. Like, it's been a little while, right? Like, um, so that for, that for some people, it's been a while. <laughs> that's true for some people. Yeah. <laughs> like, and seventeen was such a weird, unique shooting game that is. If we can get back to something closer to the twelve thirteen um, style, um, I think people will be happy. Uh, things I liked from this year, I like. I actually liked the way the defensive system actually played out, where you could only have one defender on your side of the field. Um, I thought that worked out relatively well in terms of the overall strategy that it left for the game um i think if you did safe zones but got rid of that i think it would have broken the game way worse um Mm. yeah i would like to see human players back on the field and i know i might be in the minority (laughs) with that but i don't know it was cool I thought it was cool. I think that from, like I said, I usually look at things from a marketing perspective and I think it was fun to watch. And I think one of the big things that was kind of a drawback this year was that it was really hard to watch from like the bleachers, from the floor, like anywhere you you were, it was a really hard game to, to look at and kind of see what was going on. So I don't know. I just really liked having them out there on the field. It was interactive, having everybody, you know, yell at them about what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think 2014 got the human players closer to right, where they were actually doing something in the game, where they right. were on the side of the field. Actually, the human right. player strategy and when you gave them the ball and everything was so critical in that game that mm-hmm. that was the one year where I think they really got human players right. 17, yeah, they pulled up the gears, but really, the only time you really remember them was when they made a mistake. Right. And that, that's never <laughs> fun, right? That's a lot of pressure on the kids. Um, so I'd much rather get back to something like 14 than ever have 17 again. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see him not give the field a chance to have a g20 the fact that the field can enter your frame perimeter right. and wreck your robot i understand why they had it so your bumpers could go underneath for it so it's easy for other teams to score and pick up hatches but if you didn't design your robot to keep that cargo ship out of you right it was going to wreck you that that was something we didn't catch on till probably till week four or five of build season and we were already planning to put handles on a robot that we ended up extending to make sure they were also cargo protectors but yeah and we started trying to sound that alarm a little bit to some of the teams in our area like this will destroy you yeah <laughs> yeah you will push people into it and you will wreck them. and we built like a frame perimeter on top of the frame perimeter to stop that because we have <laughs> modules up there and it would just destroy them mm-hmm. don't yeah. do that don't ever do that again please <laughs> We hope so. So we're going to go through a really fun uh, thing that each of our guests went and did. So we ranked our top 10 favorite games. Um, So we've heard that all of our guests have been a part of FRC for a long time, especially Alan. Uh, My first year was, well, my first um, year as a viewer was 98. So um, we all have a pretty wide uh, scope of what games we've seen and had to like suffer through. So I think Tyler's going to pull up and, or yep, there it is. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go through real quick and just talk about them. Um, on, I got to pull it up and read it on Skype a little bigger. Yeah. So I'll go through mine. Um, I had a hard time making this list, but uh, so yeah, 2004 was probably my favorite game 
of all time. It was my freshman year of high school and our robot was actually pretty good that year. I was on 175. Um, I loved all the different game pieces and we beat um, team 11, Brandon Holly's team in uh, quarterfinals. So suck it, Brandon. Um, and then 2005, I loved that game. Um, one of my favorite robots ever, 118's uh, Chainzilla was that year. It was so, so good. Um, let me find the list. And then uh, 2000, that was like hands down one of my favorite years ever uh, this year. And then 2016, I thought was pretty good, minus, you know, some field faults in the beginning. Uh, 2017, selfishly love that game because die rotors are awesome. Uh, 2014, like Alan was saying, super duper awesome. Loved watching uh, 254's human player trick shots. Uh, 2013, shooting frisbees. I mean, got really exciting. People got pegged in the face. Uh, 2012, wasn't bad either. And then 2007, I was driver. So <laughs> pretty good. 2012, I just remember watching uh, finals on, I don't even remember what field it was. Archimedes, holy crap. Oh, sorry, Tyler, but you know. I don't think a, I knew that you were a driver. Back in the day. To yeah. tell me stories later. Oh, yeah. You know, the disgusting pickup lines from anybody that I had to interact with in high school. Good times. Um, anyway, so let's uh, move on. So, Stacy, since you were just speaking, why don't you go through and explain okay. your uh, top 10? I see there's a bit of a gap, but yeah, I, do... I was just saying it looks I like I have your like... number 10. I know it looks like I'm like really unsatisfied with the games here, but I was here also the least amount of time. So that's still a good spread. Yeah, so um, Steamworks, I really liked. I I mentioned that I am in the minority of liking the human player on the field, so I really I did like that, and I also just liked the theme. I think it was fun. I think the game was energetic enough from the start until the end from a crowd perspective for people watching, so I just really liked that. Also, um, the team that I was mentoring had a really good year that year for the first time in a while, so that was exciting. Um, Stronghold, if we were talking about like field setup and teardown, would not be on this list at all. It would be like below Recycle Rush and like way down at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. But it was a fun game. Um, I was actually just looking at some of them today and kind of remembered that, you know, it was, I thought it was a good game to watch, but just not the field. Ultimate Ascent was actually, now that I think about it, it was actually my first year. And it was the first time that I actually saw 195, who I'm with now. And I remember just being in awe about like their Frisbees, just like flying and being like, how are they making it every time? And I, mm -hmm. I just thought it was fun. Um, and the, the, you know, the climbs at the end or whatever. Um, Power Up, I didn't, I, I didn't really love it, but I, I didn't hate it. It was fun to watch. I think it grew on me after a while, but that it only grew on me for a couple weeks and then I was over it. And by the time it was in the off season, I was so far over it. It was ridiculous. Um, deep space. I, it's okay. I have a couple issues with like the, the autonomous period, you know, the obvious lack of the autonomous and <laughs> the visibility. Quote, unquote autonomous. <laughs> yeah, so I have a, a few issues with that. I don't, that I don't really love. Um, aerial assist. Again, the team that I was at the, with at the time had this like crazy mechanism that would shoot a ball like 40 feet into the stands and they made us have mentors like around the perimeter to catch it as it was like, leave me. so that was really fun. And that was a very interactive mentor year for us. So that was, cool. um, and then there's just a big, huge gap so that I could just show how displeased I was with recycle wash, which I just thought was the most boring thing I've ever watched. Acceptable. Yeah. yeah. That's Minus wave. Wave was really awesome that year to watch. Christina, I think you're trying to make up for that 2012 <laughs> comment, but I still appreciate it. That's okay. We, we lost to you guys, but we ripped off um, your alliance partner's arms. And I think Vulcan, who won champs this year, actually had like 987 almost on our side of the field. So that made 2015 okay for me. All right. Um, so Alan, why don't you give us the rundown? Sure. So yeah, my number one game is and will probably always be aerial assist i love 2014 i'm i have other there's other people who also love this game some people hate it it's very polarizing i understand but it's the <laughs> game to me that is the most like sport game that we ever had to where we could just make it a robot sport if we had to play it year over year i think you could still play it with different strategies like we we're seeing it all the way move up through einstein and through iri that you would get 
different ways that people could play and interact with the human player and interact with their alliances. Um, the goalie polls became to matter a lot more. Um, you had so much in-depth stuff you could do, and it was just this big ball. You didn't need much on the field. You didn't need much complication. It was the robots, the humans, and the ball, and you just had a really cool game. Um, 13, Ultimate Ascent, was a fantastic game. We had Frisbees flying everywhere. Um, the climb worked when, when the robots could actually do it, and at the high level, it was awesome. Um, and then right now, I have uh, DDS up at my number three. I don't know that that'll stay that way. We still have to see how it evolves in the offseason. Um, I've kind of watched the story arcs of the games all the way through to when I'm playing it in like November. And do I still like it or not? Um, <laughs> right now I do. I don't know if I'm going to like it in November. Um, 2012 was my number three, but it got moved down because it had that co-op element and I don't like co-op parts of games. Um, but otherwise 12 was, I think a really solid game. Um, I think the defense worked well. You needed your whole Alliance to play well by the end, um, especially to all work together to get a triple balance. Um, 2005 is an awesome game that I would love to see re replayed with modern yeah. rules and bumpers and motors and everything that we have now. I think it would be a totally different game than what it actually was with just how new everything was. It was the first year of three alliance or three uh, three robot alliances. Um, and so I don't think we really did it justice in 2005. And if we got mm -hmm. something like that now, I think that game would be phenomenal. Just oh. how much how much strategy goes into exactly where to place every single Tetra, the last second stuff that you could do, and just the robots that would be built would be so awesome now. That would uh, be do awesome. it. <laughs> yeah. Six was the first shooting game. Um, 2006, aim high. I'm not, I still not a huge fan of the periods. It had some of the same problems that 2017 or 2018 had in that whoever won auto was pretty much going to win the match. Um, and so if there, there's some tweaks you can do to make sure that you can actually come back, like the auto sandstorm thing should be important and should help you in your match, but it shouldn't automatically win it. Um, and that's kind of why 18 is also this low on my, my mark as well, is whoever won auto, for the most part, you knew who was going to win the match so fast in power up. Um, and there was just not much you could do. And that's why so many of the top teams had to just put in resources to try to get those three and four cube autos. Um, 2016 was a very solid game. Nothing too bad to say about it other than audience selection was a terrible idea and we should never do anything <laughs> remotely close to that again. Um, but the, the fact that you could do a lot with just a, basically a well thought out drivetrain and that you actually had to design that was interesting. It was somewhat difficult for a lot of teams who couldn't do it well um all the teams who if teams could only go through the low bars and like that that was kind of rough for them um but it was interesting very different from a lot of the other games we've had um and then i have i'm not a huge fan of 17 at all um it was fine um but i mean they, they miss so much on the scoring that it's hard to say it's one of the favorite games right like the the fuel scoring was so bad uh, it could have been so much worse though right? oh it absolutely could have been worse <laughs> i have heard the stories um <laughs> But it, that game just felt like the entire time, it was a year of just telling my driver to go get a gear and go hang the gear over and over and over again. And it was just so redundant um, from a robot standpoint. Even eventually we did, we started, we made our robot be able to shoot and everything too in auto and it still just wasn't that entertaining to me. Um, then 2004 is an interesting game and a very cool game to see and speculate. And it was also a really fun game. I was human player that year for my team and that was awesome to be able to shoot all the balls into the thing and things. That was really cool. Yeah. Um, I still don't know exactly how it worked out strategically because so much of it was just on that bar. And if we did it again, I think that game would be a mess. Like some people want to play that one again and I don't know how that would work <laughs> with modern robots and modern motors and everything else. I think that would be a little weird. Oh man. Were you chosen as the human player because you were really tall? Uh... Yeah, and I could actually shoot a free throw, so like, nice. <laughs> you like I was pretty good. I was, yeah, I was human player a couple of years in high school. Nice. All right, so Corey, give us your top ten. Yep, I got a uh, 2017 and 2018 up there for uh, obvious and personal reasons. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I agree. 2018 can get. There was a point in the match, and and you see it on like our finals when at Detroit, we just stopped playing because the match was over there's a point in that match when the game is over um mm -hmm. that was the only bummer i didn't like about it um 17 if you weren't shooting fuel i don't think you're having fun um running gears i can see what what alan is saying it gets boring if all you're doing is running laps on a field but if you could shoot it was and effectively it was fun but not a lot of teams could do that it was a hard challenge um 2013 2012 just having the full run of the lanes, having to go and get Frisbees and come back and score. 
just seeing robots go fast across the field and having huge collisions. That was fun. Uh, the end game for 2012, I think, is the best end game first has ever had. Just trying to get robots on that teeter totter, and if you get three, the reward was so significant. Um, it was a good challenge to have. The 2000, I had 2006. Tyler keeps pulling up things. Okay, 2000, 2006 and 2004. If we played 2006, 2004 with some tweaks in the rules, like what Alan was saying, but with modern, like first robotics commercial off the shelf items. I think those two games would be excellent. Take 2004 and make that platform in the center smaller so it doesn't take up the whole field so you can get three robots on the field. Mm -hmm. But the dynamics of those games, today's motors and tech, I think would be, those would be fantastic games to play. Just have and hold as many big poop balls as you can and <laughs> chuck them around. Uh, 2014, we built a robot that had a lot of C-Rio problems. I would like to play that game again, knowing what I know now. I'd probably enjoy it more. I do enjoy watching the matches, and I use that game a lot to teach the kids what picks are and how to actually drive effectively because there's so much good driving happening in 2014. And the way the game changes where you got to play offense and then you got to go play defense, depending on where the cycle was, was good to see. Mm. Uh, 2016, I liked it, but it just took some time to get the field set and, and to change everything in and out. It was fun to watch the robots play, you know, bumper cars and fly through the air with the defenses and everything. Mm. But, and audience selection was the best that year. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, here's this Port Cullis. And what was the other one? This, this yeah, Sally Port and the Port Cullis and the drawbridge. Mm -hmm. Like, here's these giant things totally in the way, and you can't see anything. And <laughs> they were rarely used. Um, 2019 is at nine right now. We'll see how IRI goes, if that changes. How does this game play at a higher level once you get three really strong offensive robots? How does this game change? Uh, 2008, that was my senior year when I drove. So I understand that it was boring to watch two robots run around, <laughs> do laps, but we built like a fast, like a ridiculously fast robot that year that drove like a car. So you drive around corners and if you turn left, you always went towards the center and our robots <laughs> went fast. And uh, we were finalists on Newton that year. And we had to be beat OP Robotics and Wild Sting in the semifinals. Oof, um, brutal. Yes, <laughs> yes. So we you know, we beat them in the semis and got to finals, um, but that was a that always be a good place for me. Epic. All right, so those are some pretty solid top ten lists. Um, Richard Sisk wants to know: um, Are there any other games good enough to just replay? So he said that he agrees with Alan that 2014 would be worth it. So each of you, real quick, if you could replay one game, what would it be? I don't I have I don't even know I really as you guys were talking and talking about the games from that were clearly like before my time and how different it would be to do them now I have to say that it, it does sound like that would be really interesting and I wonder if that's something they would ever do is kind of like revisit one of them I I can tell you that from everything that I've heard from before my time I I wouldn't want to redo like lunacy <laughs> I want to redo nope. recycle rush. Other than that, I'd be open to any from before my time. I think it would be cool. Nice. Um, so Corey, I think 2006. I think the the shooting game changed the rules, like I said. But 2006, modern technology, open field, just shoot them where you can. Get rid of the offensive defensive period. Just flat out shoot whenever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, 2000, 2006. Alan. Yeah. I think my answer is still 2005. I think the strategic complexity of it would be so much fun. You'd have to definitely change the loading station stuff. It was weird how they, like, the, the touch pads and stuff, for anyone who remembers that game, was very weird when you had to do loading. Uh -huh. um, but otherwise, <laughs> it was a very solid game. And then, well, look, look at the safety from 2005 to now. It's like you let you, <laughs> oh, yeah. you, let, you disabled the robots, and you went running up there to put this <laughs> PVC thing on. Like, nowadays... You can't even get close. Yeah, like, they were still like drifting into the wall and stuff too, because yeah. it's not like they stopped. Yeah. They were just they were just disabled. 2014, your fingers cross a line, you get a penalty. 2015, you're putting a game piece on the robot when our the other and, 
five and, robots are operating. And the manipulators were just like tridents sticking out the front of these robots. Yeah. It's not like they were actual grippers. They were just <laughs> sharp, pointy sticks. You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are the good old days. And Tyler, real quick, <laughs> what about you? Uh, I'm with Corey, man. Two, 2006, I think, would be a fantastic game to replay. I agree. If you get rid of the periods, I thought that game was very exciting if you got rid of that. Uh, 2005, I think, would also be interesting to see. Um, just see, I think, the strategies of that, the whole tic-tac-toe aspect of that. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, just go look it up uh, online, and you can uh, see most of these games in uh, 160p resolution and enjoy what comes <laughs> along with that. But How it, about no yeah. bumpers? <laughs> You're in bumpers. Let's, let's bring and, and back. bring back a Bosch drill motor, sure. So. Yeah. Definitely keep the bumpers. <laughs> Christine, oh, what about you? Yeah. I, I was going to say, New England, if we don't have bumpers and it's not a separated field like 2015, like yeah. we're not going to be able to survive our three in-district you know, events on 125. Well, you that build app, multiple so. robots. So build a second one with the new frame. Uh, that's true. And there's no bag, so you could just keep fixing everything all the time. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.